So 30 years plus later, the Air Jordan 1 neutral grey in the 85 cut is finally out. But is it worth all those years waiting? Let's find out. What's good guys, Ash Bash back again with another sneaker review. And this is for the Air Jordan 1 neutral grey high 85. Let's get it. So unless you've been sleeping under a rock or been sleeping on um, sneaker IG, you should know that the neutral greys finally came out after only releasing in the mid 80s. They finally, finally came out and they brought them out in that old school 85 cut. The only pairs have had this work so far were the red and white pair from the New Beginnings pack and also the reverse breads, which came out last year. A lot of people liked them. A lot of people didn't like them because of the materials. And you've pretty much got the same shoe again, but in a different colorway. So if you didn't like those, you're not gonna like these. It's my first time seeing the 85s because of COVID. I didn't see any of my boys that picked these up. So time to check them out, see what I think, see what you think, whether it's worth picking up on a resale if you missed out or whatnot. Let's get to it. So to start off with, this pair comes in that red and black um, Nike box that a lot of Jordans have been coming out in lately. At first, I'm sure the first pair that I saw it in was the Fairless pack and I assumed it was something for the Fairless pack, but it's been in a lot of pairs since and they haven't really had a theme as to why those pairs, but it is what it is. Uh, on the box itself, it says Air Jordan 1 High 85 in white and neutral gray. And I got these in a UK 10 sizing. We will be talking about sizing later, but let's open up this box and show you more of the details. So when you do open up this box, you do get some nice paper, which is a nice touch. It's got the Jumpman, it's got 23, it's got the Wings logo, all fire. But the only L, which is what I'm very surprised about is we were all suspecting, expecting this to have numbered pairs and dust bags for each shoe. That's what's happened on the previous ones. And we've got none of that. Whether that's due to COVID, which means they had more time to make more pairs, or COVID, which means they took the release lightly and this didn't go for it. I don't know, Nike's a big company and I'm surprised that they went with such a lackluster release with this pair. It could have been a little bit more special, but it's a colorway we've all been waiting for. So I'm gonna take it this time, but Nike fix up in the future because this ain't it. But anywho, let's get to the shoes. And boom, here is the shoe in its OG 85 cut, the neutral gray. Finally in my possession, finally a shoe that's attainable by most people and yeah, it's good to have, that's my first of my first impressions are, I can see that it's different compared to a standard Jordan one that's been coming out. Immediately you can tell the differences, but just as a quick glance, you wouldn't think it's anything crazy, but when you feel it, there's some little differences to the shoe. So let's get into that. So straight off the bat, the thing you might notice is the cut of the shoe is just a little bit different to what you're used to with the recent-ish um, releases of the retro Jordan ones. It has a higher cut, the Wings logo is a bit different, materials are way different. And whether it's all for the positive is subjective. I will say early on that I, blasphemy as it might sound, prefer the sort of um, recent kind of style shoes. I would have taken these in like a shattered backboard kind of material over this one, but for nostalgia purposes, it makes sense. The old school Jordan ones came in a flat leather in this thicker material. And it's definitely a flat leather, no tumble at all. And the material is so much thicker. People, when they talk about materials and quality, as I said, they say shattered backboard, the cells, even the Hyper Royals, super soft to the touch, don't crease that bad. But that's not exactly what it was like back in the day. They had this sort of thicker leather, which is maybe not as nice to touch, but it is a higher quality leather. Definitely it's gonna take a lot of breaking in to break these ones in, which is bad for me because I don't get to wear my shoes that often. So might be three years deep before these are super comfortable, but it is what it is. Anyway, anywho. So yeah, the details of the shoe. The cut of the shoe is pretty much, as I said, a little bit higher and different to the standard ones. Some of the things that you'll notice straight away, we well, probably wouldn't notice, but if I point it out to you right now, is the midsole right here. The pattern on the midsole is similar to what you get on a standard Jordan one, 
but is very much more pronounced on this pair compared to a standard Jordan 1. Then you've got the Wings logo on the shoe, which is done in a sort of a Nubuck suede-ish material. Not your standard leather, but it works and it's pretty fire. The Wings logo on this shoe, I can never remember if it's embossed or debossed, I always mix them up. But on this pair, instead of it normally being embossed, I think where it's inside, this one is debossed, I believe. I can't remember which one's which. And it actually sticks out and the bits that are stuck out are the bits that are painted gray. So it looks a little bit more luxe, a little bit more premium and it's a nice little touch. Back of the shoe, you can swoosh uh, wrapping around the back of the shoe. Then the ankle collar here, a little bit of a different cut compared to your standard pair. Uh, medial side of the shoe, pretty much exactly the same. And the sole in that super nice neutral gray. So down here, I do have a pair of uh, Royals. These are from, I can never remember if it's 2016 or 17, because I got them on a, when they came out and a restock. I think I got the restock in 17, might have been the same year. But yeah, a little comparison of the two, probably the worst two shoes to pick to compare, because the colorways are so drastically different. But oh, if you can see the different sort of cut there on the toe, and the back of the shoes, it's a little bit more obvious to see maybe. Way different on the back of the shoe here. This one is so much higher, but it looks fire. Um, as I said, I do prefer this sort of style, but I'm not mad at this one at all. So yeah, quickly talk about the laces on this shoe. It comes with your standard white flat lace that we find on all your um, Jordan 1s. Nothing crazy there. On the second pair, there is a spare lace, which is in grey, behind this little tag here. And the nice thing that with this tag is it gives you the details of the old school Jordan 1, how it's constructed, all the little bits and bobs that are inside the shoe. Very nice little touch. And there is something that I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you because I don't like pulling out insoles. So let me see if I can show you without ripping my shoe apart but the insole has an old school message for the shoe hopefully you guys can see that right there i don't even know if it's going to focus but i will show you regardless but yeah if you did read that you would see that instead of saying like white and neutral gray it says white red and black now that's got to be a mistake, surely. And I've seen around on IG that it's on everybody's pair, so it's not just my pair that's got that mark. And it seems like that's what would have been in the reverse bread's pair, so I don't know why it's got the exact same sticker. It's a neutral grey, so why would it not have white and neutral grey? I don't know. That's an L, an oversight from Nike, yet again. Not impressed, but that's Nike for you. The QC, the production, craftsmanship, they lack in sometimes, unfortunately, but is what it is. Uh, ankle collar of this shoe, very plush, very stiff compared to um, your standard Jordan 1s. My boy had the reverse breads and he said that his pair, he had to put a book in it <laughs> to get it to widen up to fit his foot properly. So we'll see. Uh, I'll quickly talk about sizing of this shoe. I did say I mentioned it. So this shoe is a little bit of a weird one. Um, I would generally say stick to true to size with this. As I said, I wear UK 10. I've got 50 plus Jordan ones. All in the UK 10, they fit me fine. But in this pair, I'd say the length is totally fine. But the width, pause, <laughs> is where it's a little bit snug for me. It's a very narrow shoe, I would say, compared to the other Jordan ones that have come out lately. And I'm wide foot gang, so that doesn't help at all. But if you're wide foot like me, I think you just have to suffer and bear it because I think 10 and a half would end up being too long and I don't know if the wideness would be matched up with you just making it a little half size bigger. I don't think it's going to make that big a difference. If you've got a narrow foot, you'd be perfectly fine to rock these. Otherwise, just go to TTS and hope for the best, you know. Um, it's going to take me a while to break these in, that's for sure. I've only worn these around the house just to get a feeling of what they were like so I can mention it in the review. I'm not a massive fan of how they feel on foot. Like underfoot, it's a Jordan 1, it's a flat shoe, nothing exciting about that, but it's just that little tiny bit uncomfortable. It's like, mm, I don't love it. It's not gonna make me wanna wear it all the time. 
and I live in London where it's rainy season at the moment so I'm not going to be wearing it anyways but just something to bear in mind if you're looking forward to rocking these it's not in my opinion the most lovely wear if you're not like a narrow footed kind of person but yeah that's the end of the review hopefully you've enjoyed it the 85s white um, and neutral grey finally released gas to get them especially for retail as well I wasn't expecting it I was prepared to pay and resell on these and I'm glad I didn't have to in the end Anywho, follow me on Instagram, Ash Bash Sneakers, dope pictures posted most days. Like, comment, subscribe on this video. And if you haven't already, check out Half Size Up Podcast, which is a podcast I do with my boys Mo and Dean. Uh, link in the bio of all that fun stuff. We out. Later, y'all.